from Server from 17 once again. This is my Metal Gear Solid 3 European Extreme Difficulty video walkthrough. We're going to be moving through the warehouse, which is a very tri tricky area. Uh, even when you know what you're doing, that is the camouflage from the boss for beating him uh, non lethally. And you might notice that I'm no longer bleeding. I trimmed out me healing myself because it was obvious that I would have to do it and it saves a couple of seconds on the video because this is probably the longest video so far. And what I'm doing here is I'm displaying how you can get your life back. Metal Gear Solid 3 and Metal Gear Solid 4, I'm not entirely sure what the reasoning behind it is, but if you lay on the ground and you wait, your life will gradually reset, it will gradually rekindle. And I just wanted to show off this, this feature. I'm not actually going to wait and, and get full life or anything, because there's no point in that. And I just pressed the wrong button there to go to my menu, because I'm an idiot. And one thing you want to get on top of is only equipping the items that you need, because when you're scrolling through the, the, the menus, it's a bit of a pain in the ass, and you can land on the wrong things. And one of the things that was frustrating me quite a lot when I was playing this was if you try to run with the left analog as you come out of a menu and if you do it a little bit too anxiously before you've let go of the right trigger you will equip the wrong item and there's a, a boss loop against the end and I'm trying to use a, a well-known strategy that is really really useful but I'm not that good at it and it's the first time I've really practiced it because I just used to think you know it's a cool thing but I like to sh fight him with a rifle kind of thing but on this guy I wanted to show people it and I kept fucking it up because I'd be putting the wrong thing on because I was trying to do it so fast. And I eventually did get better at it, and I'm going to show you what you need to do to get the loop, even though I don't do it properly in, in the kill of the boss. And it's because I don't have enough stun grenades to get the perfect loop, so I have to get a little bit creative, and the end does troll me. He shoots me twice from, like, point-blank range, which is really annoying, but I embarrass him with a nice low kick, which makes up for the, the shots but a lot of people watching this are probably curious why I didn't pick up the crocodile hat and that was a mistake there if I was going for a, a speed run that's probably a reset because <laughs> I would save and you're losing precious seconds on that bullshit but this sequence here if you have the crocodile hat you can put it on and I believe you can get through this really really easily uh, without it people think it's a little bit more tricky but if you know the path it's actually really simple so for this one you just want to kind of hug this this right wall but not too close for the next one you want to kind of do the the same thing because you'll just get past it and as soon as the light in front of you goes out stand up get your breath back and then continue swimming and if you do it in this sequence with this rhythm the light ahead will turn to the left opening up the path allowing you to go straight through and it's all perfectly timed but if you deviate at any point the light will differ so you need to do it on that one smooth run and I did not I did not yeah, losing my words sound bloody French that did not, did, 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 did not. Uh, I didn't do that on my first attempt on my practice run but once I learnt the path that was one record right there so that was a successful screen for me considering that I'm pretty shit at this game <laughs> But this is the Pozponizovji warehouse. This is the area where you can kill the end early, but we won't be doing that. Uh, what I'm going to do is another speedrunning tactic here. I'm going to trank the first guy, and then I'm going to trank the second guy, and then I'm going to shoot some barrels. Because when I trank the first guy and I shoot the barrels, there was always a guy left behind, and I don't really know why. So... There we go. It just didn't work for me. I tried it a few times and the guy was still alive, so I decided to do it that way. Which, I suppose you could say is my method or someone else's method who I've never heard of that I'm imitating. Because a lot of the strategies on this game, people seem to think are new. I'm going to drop in the water here quite a lot as well, just because the game, my shit analogue and the shit controls of this game. And The controls aren't shit, but they're just old and... We've got so much simpler now. Everything is easier to do on the controller. Like, if I gave this to my nephews, they would probably have a lot of difficulty aiming and shooting. They just would, because it doesn't flow. Like, if you played the second game, the second game was worse. But, like, you try and aim an assault rifle on Metal Gear Solid 2 without shooting the bloody thing. You just look like some kind of spazzing epileptic. It, it, it was madness, and it was just weird game design. And there's still bits of that that remain in this, even though it is significantly smoother. 
but this is the warehouse. This is one of the screens that the speedrunners make look easy, but it's actually really fucking tough. And I'm going to mess up a jump here. And if you mess up that jump, you want to just trank this guy or shoot the barrel behind him to blow him up. But I think if you shoot the barrel, you'll probably alert the guy behind you and you'll get spotted. So this is kind of my backup run. The jump I was trying to make is that, but if you do it, you can often completely skip the boxes and land next to the guard. And it, it looks tricky, and it is, but I've done it numerous times on takes where I got seen after this point. Uh, if you go in this room here, there's some food to pick up, which is always worth doing, because the food is useful. And you pick up a mouse trap, which you use to catch the mythical serpent, but you're not going to see me do that. And then this guard up here... Apparently this guard is really stupid, but I still don't give him the you know, the time of day to, to screw me over. So instead, I just do a nice little bit of cheeky uh, grenade running. And there we go. Into Granini Gorky South. So this here, for anyone who's played the game, is the area where we're going to be fighting the next boss. And we're going to be fighting the boss when we come back through. A couple of things to talk about during that boss fight. There's a lot of things you can do to kill the pain. Oh, the fear, sorry. Uh, the one I'm going to do is probably the fastest stamina kill, but I just can never get it to kill him. So he always runs away with a little bit of life left, because I, I choke. And I was choking a lot on the bosses on this game, and I don't even know why. I wasn't nervous. I wasn't particularly panicky. I just go to reload before the clip is empty, and instead of cancelling the reload, I just unequip the gun. You know, It was ultimate choke. Just really, really bad play on my part. So this part here, for some reason, I'm using a lethal weapon there. Jesus, Chris, come on, catch up. The dog is stupid, and I don't really understand it. So all you have to do is trank him and then get under the fence. You don't even have to mess with the dog. Like, you'll probably see someone who's really good who doesn't even mess with the guard. Because some of the paths that the, the speedrunning community use on this game are just insane. But as far as the fear is, is concerned, I'm going to do the, the stamina kill strategy. He's going to have a little bit of life. He's going to run away. He's going to go and get food, and the food's going to poison him, which is really fortunate. And then I'm going to shoot him with the Mark 22 and put him out of his misery. So coming up here is another mistake. Uh, you can cross this area if you do it right, and then swap into the scientist gear and get into the door without having any problems. And on my recording run, I didn't have any issue here at all. But on this one... I get stopped and I didn't know what this meant so from this point onwards this is all new to me because I'd never done this before and it turns out they put you in a cell and there's a ton of dudes close to it and if you if you run into these guards they'll go hostile and you'll fail so you want to be really careful but the cool thing is I haven't really lost all that much progress that happens almost every time that bastard spider so dumb that thing bit me twice like come on really and in this room here, some Mark 22 ammo, so I'm going to pick it up because I always seem to be low on the stuff. And then when you go up these stairs, it's going to lead you to the the main part of this building. And then you want to go to the opposite staircase, I believe. And what we're going to get here is we're going to get the cigarette lighter, or the cigarette gas thing. It's a, a way of putting civilians out, or even guards probably, and it's really useful against the end. So that's where you're going to see me use it the most. But the only thing you need to bear in mind in this sequence is soldiers will not bat an eye at you unless you run into them or pull a gun or something. Scientists will. Scientists will immediately see through your disguise and you will instantly fail the game. So what you want to be careful of is getting too close to the scientists. And there are tricks. You can stun them with the gas. You can roll through them. You can run into them and disturb them so they do a flinch animation if you're close to a door or close to a trigger. There's a lot of sneaky things you can do. Obviously, you can avoid their eyesight, and that'll help as well. And uh, This part of the run actually went really well, um, as far as you know, just efficiency and, and not having to restart. So in this room here, there's going to be the SIG lighter thing. There it is, SIG gas spray. Some crazy, like, 1960s spy gear. And in here, there's a scientist, and if you do this quick enough, you can get past him without him looking. This room here, this guy is an asshole, so we roll through him just before he triggers, and then we hit the cutscene. There's a bunch of talking, and then we're going to have to retrace our steps. 
So the game wants us to retrace our steps back to the warehouse, and we're going to do it like this. So if you put your box on there, that guy doesn't do anything to you, which is super useful, because every other strategy I tried, he saw me and I failed. And luckily enough for me, that was on the practice run, so on this run, this went really nice and smooth. And we just have to, as I said, get back to the warehouse. And on our way there, we're going to run into the fear in that room from before, and then we're going to be fighting him. And it's funny, because the bosses on this game are so easy compared to Metal Gear Solid 2, it's not even funny. And that's not even mentioning the fact that a lot of the bosses have really, really well-devised strategies on how to embarrass them. And on Metal Gear Solid 2, there aren't really that many. A lot of them are so skill-dependent that it's literally down to your ability. On this game, some of these strategies, while they're tricky to, to pull off, most of them can be done reliably. And uh, I'm not so used to that. But this bit here, if you run past as the scientist and turn into the box... Uh, you should have enough time to get into this grass, crouch, and get through the door. I did get spotted there on, on my practice run. So you want to be careful, because European Extreme, I can't even begin to tell you how easily the guards see you. And once again, anybody who does a, a single session speed run, uh, or a single segment, sorry, of the game, is amazing. Because it means that they're doing it all without getting seen, and all on the first attempt, which... If you play this game a ridiculous amount, might not be that difficult of a thing, but it really is tough. So those people are just insanely gifted and insanely devoted. But you might notice I put on this crazy panther outfit. I saw somebody do it on a couple of runs, and I think it has something to do with the dogs. I don't think the dogs react to you, but uh, I'd never had trouble with the dogs, so I decided to put it up, put it on, and see if it made a difference. And I did get through this screen without any alerts, but I'm not entirely sure if it made any difference at all. So I'm not going to recommend you do that because I'm not entirely sure it does anything. But once again, people more knowledgeable about the game than me will probably give a good reason for why that just happened. So thank you for watching, and you take care now.